Salesforce Security and Identity using SAML single sign-on JIT just in time allows you to create and update user data automatically. When you have single sign-on and an identity provider that typically contains the key information about your users, it would be good to have a method to take any updates to that data and send it to your Salesforce org or another service provider automatically. You can set up your own batch load, but there's also a straightforward way that you can use SAML JIT just in time um, to pass data every single time a user logs in and have that data updated automatically. In this diagram, I have an identity provider which is Salesforce, and I have a user, Homer IDP, and Homer has a particular phone number. And then I have a different Salesforce org with Homer SP, service provider. So it's a different user in a different um, Salesforce org. However, I've set them up fed with a federated ID, and when I log in to the service provider SP1, it redirects and authenticates in the IDP, and there is a mechanism to where you can have specific data updates to the user records brought back to the service provider automatically. So this is an automatic user update every single time the user um, logs in. And we're going to take a look at this me method. It's called SAML JIT, create or update the user data automatically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm logged in to the IDP. You'll see in the URL identity provider plus this indicator in the top left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Homer's record, the current user, and I'm going to change his phone number to 555.123-4567. So this is a new pa a new phone number with 5123-4567 as the phone number. Now what I'm going to do is go to settings and I'm going to show you the settings we did beyond the single sign-on um, for passing that data. So because we're in the service provider, we're going to go into app manager and the, excuse me, we're in the IDP and to find the setting for this particular service provider, we're going to see its configuration SP demo org. So this represents, this connected app represents the service provider org. Right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to view. This is the connection. Um, and what we can see right here is if I scroll down, I can see custom attributes. And right here, I've added a custom attribute called user.phone. And I've done the substitution variable pulling the user.phone. So what's happening, it is going to include at every login, the user phone as an attribute in the SAML payload. So that is now included and you can add any number of additional attributes. So I'll just show you, you can insert things on the API, the profile, the system, the user. So there is a lot of data you have access to and you include them as custom attributes. So again, right now I have user.phone included as a custom attribute. Now I'm in the SP org, the service provider org. What I'm going to do is go look up users and I'm going to take a look at Homer, SP Homer's phone. And we're going to take a look at his phone. What I'm going to do is change his phone to being 999-999. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making sure that when I single sign on, the nines go away and are replaced by the setting we put in the IDP. So you can see Homer IDP's phone is 999. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to the single sign on settings. And here are the single sign-on settings that come in for this particular one. And what I've done is I have done user provisioning enabled and I have, a, I have created my own class, which is a SAML JIT handler. So right here, 
and it's executing as a user with proper permissions. So you need to check this box and you need to have created a class that overrides the standard JIT handler and run it with a user with the proper context. Now I'm in my IDE and you'll see I've created a new class, STA SAML JIT handler. What I've done is there are two methods you need to override, the create user and the update user. And then here in the create user, it's going to create a new user record, read attribute values, select a profile. In this case, I'm hard coding system administrator, but you would have your own custom logic to selectively choose which profile to create, most likely based on one of the attributes. And then in update user, I'm having it retrieve the user record, looking for the phone attribute, and copy it over. Now, if it can't find an attribute, it's going to give it 555, 555, 555. But if it does, it'll replace it with the user's phone. So this will be reading the attribute on the single sign-on and performing a user update. So here I'm trying to log in fresh to the SP1. I'm going to be doing a redirect to the IDP. Now, as I'm about to log in as Homer, I was trying to go into the SP, the service provider. I was redirected to the IDP automatically using single sign-on. And right as I go in, I'm gonna turn on my SAML tracer so I can see what's happening. And now we're gonna be able to see the redirect back from the IDP to the SP. So if I hit login, and now I am logged in to the SP what I want to show you is inside my SAML inspector, I can see my SAML. And if I scroll down, we looked at this in a previous video, but we can look down here and you'll see that there is an attribute called user phone. Let me make it bigger. You can see user phone is an attribute and it's bringing across 555, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this came in in every login and I can be in here, I can go to the settings for Homer SP. This is Homer's user record in the service provider. And we had set this to 99999, and instead it's now in sync to the value we brought in from the IDP. So this can now have a, every single time Homer logs in, it will carry one or many pieces of information from the IDP over to the SP, keeping the two records in sync. So this is a very powerful mechanism. So now you see with just a little bit of code and a few settings, you have the ability to take and keep a service provider or Salesforce up to date on any number of attributes coming from, let's say a, a, another org, Salesforce has the IDP, or a ping or Okta single sign-on with your Active Directory, so that way the user records in your service providers can be kept up to date automatically. Now know that this will only happen when the users log in. So if you needed that data updated nightly, you would have to set up a batch process. But if you just want it kept up to date as the users use the system, this is a very quick and easy method um, and you don't have to worry about having these batch processes. I hope this was helpful. So that's JIT with SAML and look, stay tuned for more content, more sessions coming, same bat time, same bat channel, and make sure you subscribe to Steve TechArf. Thank you very much. Have a great day.